Erev Shabbat Shalom, Rabotai. We are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masachet Baba Metziah. We are up to Per Gimel, Mishnah Gimel. Today's Mishnah Yot should be Le'ilui Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Ranbai, Veliyahu, Ben Burcha, Yisrael, Ovchana, Bad Miriam, Sasson Ben Rayan, Yoshua Ben Shifra, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen, and the Abdir Ben Chaim Lechaim, and the Refua Shalema, Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa, Betor Shachole Yisrael, and the Chlama Mera, Benamin, Or Tzion Chai Ben Dvora. This Mishnah deals with several cases where a person said to two people that he is obligated to pay one of them, but he does not know which one. Amar Lishnaim, if one person said to two others who had made no claim against him, Gazalti lechad mikem mane, veni yode eze mikem, I stole him mane, 100 zuz from one of you, but I do not know from which one. O aviv shelechad mikem ifkidli mane, veni yode eze hu, or he said, the father of one of you deposited a maneh with me before he died, but I do not know which one. The law in both cases that he must give a maneh to this one and a maneh to this one. Showed up me piat smo because he admitted his obligation by himself, meaning since he came forward and admitted that he must pay without any claim having been made against him, he shows that he wants to fulfill his moral duty and not merely his legal obligation. This can be accomplished only by giving a manette to each person so that the rightful owner is certainly paid. There are two types of monetary obligations, legal obligations, which a human court can f- force a person to fulfill, and moral obligations which, can, which cannot be enforced by a human court, but which a person must fulfill if he wishes to avoid punishment from the court of heaven. In our Mishnah's case, the moral obligation of the thief or Shomer is greater than his legal obligation. He is legally obligated to pay only the amount that he certainly owes, one mané. He fulfills his obligation by paying just one mané, which is divided between the two owners. His moral duty, however, is to pay a full mané to each one. Now this applies where the owners did not make claims against this person. If, however, they did make claims against them and each swore that his claim is true, he would be legally obligated to pay an entire mané to each one. Although a person cannot usually be obligated to pay more than what he certainly owes, even where claims have been made against him, the sages punished him because he is a thief, or in the case of a Shemel, because he was negligent and that he forgot who the owner was. This legally enforceable punishment does not apply where no claims were made, and the person admitted to his obligation on his own, as the Ramam discusses in Echot Gzilat, chapter 4, Lacha 10. And that is in the Mishnah Gemo. Mishnah Daud speaks of a situation where someone received money from two people, but he does not know how much he received from each one. Shnaim Shifkidu at Selechat, two people deposited money with one Shomer, Zemanev Zemataim, one of them deposited a Mane, 100 Zuz, and the other one deposited 200 Zuz. They deposited their money with the Shomer at the same time and in the presence of each other. Zemer Shinimataim, Zemer Shinimataim, when they came to collect their money, one said the 200 Zuz are mine, and the other said the 200 Zuz are mine, and the Shomer did not remember which of them deposited the 200 Zuz. The law is that he must give a manet to one and a manet to the other because each of them deposited at least that amount with him. And the remaining manet, which is the amount in dispute, should be put away in the care of the Shomer until the Prophet Eliyahu comes and tells us to whom the money belongs or until one of the claimants admits that he was lying. Although we learned earlier that a Shomer who is responding to claims must pay each claimant the full amount he is seeking, this Shomer does not need to pay each claimant 200 Zuz, it is enough for him to pay each one 100 Zuz, because in the case we discussed earlier, the Shomer was negligent in that he forgot who the owner was, so the sages punished him by requiring him to pay everything that was being claimed. Here, however, he was not negligent because the two owners gave him their money in front of each other, which shows that they trust each other. The one who deposited the larger amount was not worried that the other might claim the larger amount as his. Since there is trust between the owners themselves, the Shomer is not required to prevent a dispute between them by keeping track of who gave the larger amount. Now the next time it disagrees, Amar Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi said, Im ken ramai. If so, that each owner receives the one mané that is surely his, what does the liar lose? Since the one who gave only one mané gets back all his money and does not lose anything, he has no monetary incentive to admit that he was lying. Rather, all the money, 300 zoos, should be put away until Eliyahu comes or until one of the owners admits that he gave only a mané. And this way, the liar will be motivated to tell the truth because otherwise he loses even the amount that is rightfully his. And that is the end of Mishnah Dalit. And that is the end of the of Tiriz Mishnah Yomi. Everybody should have a Erev Shabbat Shalom. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.